Hello everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we get to break out some of the modulars because there's a new shop in town. A tea shop and restaurant to be more specific, plus an apartment. It's exceptionally tall, full of details, and has some vibrant splashes of color that really make it pop. The original builder, BT Mox, has really knocked out something special. There are all kinds of external and internal bits of building that I want to show you. But first, I'd like to say that if you wanted to build this modular creation, the instructions can be found at our web store, brickvault.toys. Included with each purchase is the PDF step-by-step -step building guide, a digital parts list for quickly uploading and ordering all the pieces you'll need. All of our models are built in real life, tested for strength, instructions are tested so they're easy to follow along and pieces are chosen with availability in mind. Buying instructions is a great way to help support us here at the channel and the talented people we work with like BT Mox. This is his first creation up in the web store so let us know what you think about this model in the comments below. It matches up really well with other modular designs so click that link in the description below if you want to learn more or get started and now let's take a closer look at the tea shop and restaurant. This is in a way the biggest modular we have, I think. If you're just counting like creator modular sets and not the Ninjago City, uh, technically Town Hall here is the tallest, but only by a little, and it's really just that bell tower. The meat of the tea shop does come up a bit higher, and a fun thing to sort of point out here is that the Town Hall set is a little under 3,000 pieces, while the tea shop and restaurant is over 5,000 parts. So both on the outside and on the inside for sure, the builder has just added tons and tons and tons of details. The first thing I'd really like to focus on though is the palette and just general texture of the building. There is a huge amount of structural variability in the front, which is the most important thing, the eye-catching area of the modular. If you start on the right-hand side, you have the narrow extension. It's got a consistent, somewhat weathered brick wall texture. There are uniform dark blue windows, some classic brick-built lettering at the bottom that spell out T, and at the top, a steeply angled black shingle roof. The area is made to look like a smaller building is sandwiched next to the restaurant, but it's a little narrower than 16 studs, so this isn't a detachable section of the model. And I also really like the way this area looks, especially when you have a bunch of modulars matched up together, because this tall, narrow area of the model just stands out in a pretty distinct way, because I think it's only 10 studs wide. But looking at this structure as a whole, the model is then broken up into three pre pretty distinct level sections. On the left hand side, the restaurant's first floor at the bottom has a yellow and dark tan color combo for the walls. You see some outdoor seating, a shaded awning with flowering vines. I actually don't know much about flowers, but I think this could be Bougainvillea. There is some great texturing below the windows, a simple round step leading to the door, which I like. There's also small round column-like details along the walls and lamps that hang from the awning as well. The second floor shows solid white walls with some brown backed windows and a variety of simple techniques to add some more shaping here. The bricks are built on their sides, for example, at the base level. There are some slopes and modified bricks to use here and there to embellish the cornice just below the third level, which is nice. And let's jump right over to the third level, which is essentially the roof. Ish. It's very steep, and given the color here, it kind of comes off as maybe a terracotta styled roof, but the angle is just so dramatic that that's probably not the case. There's some great color variation with the tiles, plus more vines that make this simple bit of design pop basically more than anything else on the rest of the model, especially from afar the orange and red and green really stands out on the face of the build. Now the roof roof itself is a bit different. There are planter boxes, so a small garden. There's also a small seating area with some shade, a chimney top, and then also matching up with the narrow section of the building, you can see a massive multi-angled window that leads all the way to the back of the building. That narrow extension in black has windows on all three sides, which opens up the area in a pretty unique way. At the top, you can see the inside to 
a bedroom. Then below is an open balcony for the top floor residents. On the level beneath, you can see spiraling stairs that lead from the second floor to the third, and then finally a small tea garden at the very bottom. I suppose that's a pretty good segue to start leading inside the model. Let's begin at the base and work our way up. The restaurant is the main entrance with space for one table, wine on a shelf, stairs to the second floor, and a cash register that has a small window that leads to the kitchen. There, the kitchen has a small stovetop, oven, fridge, and sink. This is a quaint little area with plenty of details, but lots of stuff to show off here. So let's swing on over to the tea shop. It's got a great looking rack of shelves, all full of different teas, I would guess. Some of those drawers are open, which is a nice touch. You can see a kettle as well as a cash machine and a variety of mugs along the top shelf. I imagine you could get either a glass of brewed tea here or just buy some tea to take home. I like that the back room has some shears on the wall for pruning or harvesting, as well as a bucket for collecting tea leaves. And we're already jumping on over to the second floor. This is an extension of the restaurant. I like that BT Mox carried over the floor design uh, to keep it consistent between the levels. This main dining area has three tables, uh, some candles on some furniture, a better look too at the curtain designs in dark blue by the windows, some wall lamps, and an excellent build for billiards. I'm curious to know what kind of restaurant you think this is. I thought it could be maybe a French styled restaurant when I was building, but once I got to the pool table, I figured it could be a pub of some sort. Let me know in the comments below, but uh, let's jump on over now to the spiral stairs that leads up to the third floor, straight into the living room. We have a bookcase immediately on one side with some fun details. Then on the other, there is the sofa, coffee table, TV situation in the middle, and behind that, a fireplace and plant, and perhaps the smallest kitchen ever. Seven by seven studs gets you a sink, drawers, countertop, fridge, stove, and oven. That is extremely efficient building. The bathroom is plenty big, like almost twice as big, which is kind of funny. It's got a solid build for a tub, and I'd also like to point out that there's no shower here, so the figs that live here take zero showers. All right, there's that small bit of furniture next to the last spiral staircase, and we're at the bedroom now with the same hardwood floor detailing as below. This room is pretty straightforward. There is an aquarium by the small window on one side of the stairs, then a large checker blanket bed with bedside drawers and a lamp. Wow, that was a lot to cover. There are still plenty of details I didn't bother to mention. But one thing I really, really appreciate here is that BT Mox included tons of jumper pieces to make it easier to pose figs on all levels for all things. I've been playing around with different building configurations to see which setup I like best. It's really difficult to choose which modulars you like putting together with each other. But for sure, I'm going to keep this guy sandwiched between two other models, I think. It is a traditional straight piece that isn't as easy to pass off as a corner model compared to some of the other modulars out there. I had a blast putting this together. I forgot how much fun it was just messing around with modulars. And for us, the tea shop and restaurant is a welcomed, welcomed addition. Remember, if you think you might wanna build a creation like this for yourself, you can click that link in the description below or check us out at brickvault.toys. Let me know what you guys think about BT Mox Tea Shop and Restaurant in the comments. Of course, let us know what types of creations you'd like to see built in the future. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, or share, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!